Hello guys, this is Apitech here and I'm back with another video uh, and this time we'll be doing uh, something different that I've never done before and it's a uh, VR ready gaming build so this is gonna be a PC build that uh, it's gonna be uh, ready to run uh, any VR headset like the Oculus Rift especially because it's it's gonna be based on uh, the PC requ spec requirements that were provided by Oculus Rift but I would imagine it's to still be able to run uh, all the other VR headsets that are coming out like the HTC Vive or Steam VR and um, I think it was the Sony Project Morpheus another one so you should be able to uh, run all those uh, VR headsets and play games in VR this is gonna be uh, a fairly a budget one it's not gonna be like a, a thousand plus pounds I'm sticking to an eight eight hundred and fifty pound uh, budget for this and we'll see what kind of uh, specs we get and what kind of components you should be able to get for this kind of price if you're gonna be spending money on a VR headset then you, sh you probably will be a, a more uh, like an enthusiast gamer that's uh, does a lot of gaming uh, for the components uh, first we have the CPU which for this I chose the uh, an Intel Core i5-4690K a 3.5 gigahertz quad core processor so it's got four cores clocked to 3.5 gigahertz and it's the K version uh, meaning you can overclock it and with a decent CPU cooler should be able, able to overclock this uh, above 4 gigahertz easily and the i5 is an overall very good CPU cooler and uh, you can go with the new i5 which is the Skylake one uh, the 6600K but for the price it's gonna be about 30, 30 pounds more expensive and you probably only get about 5% 5, 5 uh, more increase uh, in uh, performance uh, clock for clock I mean so the same frequencies which I don't think it's worth the, uh, the increase in price uh, this is a very decent CPU it should last you for a while the uh, Intel Core uh, CPUs uh, are known for their single thread performance which games are gonna take advantage of and that's why I chose this and for a CPU cooler it's uh, the cooler I always use which is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Vivo it's the best cooler for the money it's only 25 pounds and you should be able to uh, easily uh, cool this CPU down and give you some very good uh, overclock um, I'm able to overclock my uh, 8320 which is a more uh, power hungry and more key output and should uh, I'm able to overclock it to 4.4 GHz so you should have no problem overclocking the Intel i5 processor above 4 GHz like something like 4.4 4.5 GHz uh, next we have the motherboard for this it shows the Asus Z97 Pro, ga uh, Pro Gamer motherboard it's on the LGA 1150 uh, socket, so it's gonna match a CPU socket, and it's a very good motherboard for the uh, for the money. It's 110 pounds, which is a more on the expensive side, but you need a decent motherboard with a decent VRM solution uh, to be able to overclock, uh, uh, get a decent overclock on your CPU, and just overall the uh, extra features you get for the money it is pretty good as well. Uh, next, we have the Kingston HyperX Fury Black, 8 gigabytes. Uh, kit which is it's DDR3 1866 so it's 1866 MHz which is supported by a motherboard which the motherboard I think goes up to like 3000 something like that uh, it's overall very good uh, uh, RAM I'm using it in my own PC so I can recommend it and for the price especially now it's 33 pounds uh, so it's very cheap and uh, it's very good value for money uh, you, know, you only need 8 gigs at the moment for gaming especially if this is this is just gonna be focused on just gaming uh, so for gaming 8 gigs is more than enough uh, but you can pick up another kit uh, of another 8 gigs and make 16 you have enough uh, slots and it's very cheap as well so if you want to go that way and uh, you can do that uh, next for the storage I chose the Samsung's 850 series 250 gig SSD any modern build should be using SSDs as the power and uh, performance I mean as the performance you get in terms of uh, operating system uh, boot up times and uh, applications running that are installed on the SSD it just it's very noticeable over the hard drive and it's a 250 gigs which should be enough for your uh, operating system and a, a couple of games in one container whole library but um, that's why I got a secondary uh, hard, uh, hard drives for mass storage and more of the games that you play in less uh, but o overall the Samsung uh, SSD is one of the best ones for the money at the moment it's uh, £65 for 250 gigs which is uh, pretty good as uh, 
like a year ago it would have been twice that so it's just getting it and for the mass storage or the hard drive I chose the Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte hard drive now I know Seagate it's sort of a very good uh, it's good hard drive it's pretty fast and it's very comparable to the WD but if you're not uh, uh, if you if you don't want to risk it then you can get a WD Cavia blue 1 terabyte one or you can get go for the 2 terabyte black version which is going to be more expensive it's over a very good uh, pass, uh, very good hard drive and I would recommend it for this build now next is the graphics card and for this I chose the MSI's Radeon R9 390 8 gigs uh, graphics card uh, the requirements that were listed by Oculus uh, said that they require a 970 or 290 um, I chose a 390 because it's uh, it's better than the 290 you get extra VRAM better power management as in uh, you get less power consumption at the same uh, speed and uh, I would also recommend it over the 970 as uh, for the extra VRAM so it's gonna be very more uh, future uh, it's gonna be compatible for the future as games are requiring more and more VRAM at the moment and 8 gigs is, is more than enough to last you a few years and it's over a very powerful card in terms of performance it's in mo uh, mostly uh, outperforms the 970 so that's why I would suggest it and it's about the same price if not cheaper than the 970 so I'd recommend it but if you can spend more money on the graph graphics card then uh, 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 the next one I would suggest which is a good value for money is like uh, a 980 Ti like other things you should bother with like a GTX 980 as the performance increase you get over like the 970 or the 390 is not really worth the extra um, money um, and the 980 is gonna give you, 980i is gonna give you so much more performance for the price the extra price that it's probably gonna be worth it uh, but next I have the case and this is my favorite case I chose uh, I choose in all my builds pretty much as the NZXTS 340 is the case I'm using uh, for myself so I can recommend it I can strongly recommend it it's one of the best cases out there at the moment for the price as well uh, this is the black version uh, which is gonna match all our components in that and it's just an overall very solid case nice big side window uh, just good build quality just looks good as well uh, decent uh, very good uh, cable management and it's gonna fit all the components in no problem even the big uh, CPU cooler and it's gonna hide all your cables very nicely and it's overall very good next and last we have the power supply for this I chose the EVGS Supernova Next 650 watt power supply it's A plus gold so you get that very high efficiency which is gonna save you some power it's a very reasonable price at 63 pounds for 650 watts uh, it's a very good price. The 650 watts is going to be more than enough to power this build. A bit, uh, as we, I chose a bigger uh, wattage, like 650, um, because we are using an AMD R9 390, which is more power uh, power hungry card than like a 970. And for the price, it's over a very good power supply. It's fully modular, so you don't have to worry about cables. And you can just use the cables that you need, and you don't have any other cables where you're trying to hide them or tuck them away. And I would so strongly recommend this power supply as EVGA are known for making some very good power supplies at the moment, some very high quality. I'm using an EVGA power supply at the moment in my build, so I can recommend it. And this is it for the build, guys. Um, it's gonna cost you £850, as I said before, and you should have no problem uh, running games on a VR headset uh, when they come out. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Yeah, my next video is probably gonna be a, a US build as I've been looking at my statistics recently and they've been showing that most of my viewers are from America so I'm gonna do a, spe a special build for you guys. Uh, this is it and see you in the next video.